a look in the Oculus. Uh, he, he kept it the way it is. He <laughs> has the truck. Yeah, name a place, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the fact is this. Roshan HaKodesh was spoken by everybody in the beginning. And then uh, when it came to the power of Babel, they started changing their languages. The languages started changing all over the place. Uh, the family of the Avon HaKodesh is their language. And uh, a few others uh, as well, most of them changed different languages. And Lovin being uh, also the family, uh, he could speak both languages. And he did. But he was accustomed to change. Paro could not understand Hebrew. It was, he spoke in uh, Egyptian, obviously. You know, yeah, I read it. I read it. It's very interesting. There's an article there about a, a Jewish scholar at Yeshiva University that deciphered uh, here, here are two undeciphered pirates, the pepper, what do you call it? The pirate. The pirate. The pirate. The pepper. Pepper is what do you call it. And it was, and that was uh, written, uh, written on hieroglyphics, but it was uh, not, uh, not transferable. And he, he deciphered it. And he, he, he figured out like this that it was it was plagiarism on a Hebrew psalm. Plagiarism. Mm-hmm. Took the Hebrew psalm, dedicated to the Danish lamb, and they dedicated it to their local god. And it was written written by a, a Egyptian scribe who had no knowledge of Aramaic. Mm-hmm. Right. So he told it, wrote it the way. You, for instance, they translate the the uh, the Kaddish into English. Transliteration. Transliteration. So he didn't have any knowledge of the grammar of Aramaic. So when he wrote it, even as a person that knows Aramaic, he couldn't make it out as being Aramaic. And that's why it was hidden all this time. But he surmised that he just tried to take the phonetic highlights of it. Therefore, he was able to translate. He... Oh, he knew. He, he was. He knew uh, and he knew also Aramaic. And he, he, he specialized in Aramaic. And and besides being a Jew was able to uh, figure out that this is what the like. sound from Hebrew to right. This was the custom, this is the custom in the ancient language and they used to borrow rituals from other religions and what adopt them to their own religion. In our present day and time, I do business with a lot of Goyim, both Weisse and Schwarz. Yeah. And what do you think they have on a gold chain around their neck? Not a cruise. They no. got a star or they got a ka. And why do you think they were? They say, oh, the Jews are so lucky that they, they, to be, at least if I have this sign on me, the Satan is not going to bother me or something. Yes, so I'm telling them, they hey, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. But, but do they know what? Why, why do they think we no, don't they know? They do a Jewish and they want to, to be they guarded. Want to get, to why do they persecute us? Oh, yeah. Example to understand like, why right. this guy took the Hebrew or whatever. All right, now let's go back to let's go back to what the Bali Tasmus. Because he wanted to be on the Tasmus. Oh, the hero. Tasmus says it is not proper in order to fulfill this mitzvah yeah. to read the laws. I give you the agent to read the laws, not for fulfilling the mitzvah, but in order so to be intelligible. Yeah, yeah, so the target sometimes explains things that you can't learn from the Zuchtei. Oh. We find many places in the Gomorrah. The Omar Rav Yosef in the Moran Megillah Dab- on top of the page here. If it wasn't for the Targum of this particular Pasuk, that particular passage, in down on my Komar, I wouldn't know what we're saying, what it means. I've gone. As I told you, there are many places in the Targum vocalist that he, he gives a commentary rather than translation into Aramaic. Over. Ancient Pamshlishis in Lashon Targum. Therefore, you should not say in any other language except the Lashon of Targum. All right, fine. Now, if you skip down, uh, she also ima tibor. You should finish, gentlemen. Please, gentlemen. If you have a shaila, you understand. Yeah, the yeah. argument uh, seems to be that there's nobody translates targum. And I don't understand these words. I'm Translating right you. now. Yeah. I'm saying word by word what it means. Ilama. Lo yadano my komar would not know what we say. What it's what's what the pasuk means. One thing you must be is patient. It's true that you would like to learn everything the Basachas and Halabai. If with God's help, God would teach you to share, you would have no problem. Unfortunately, you're, the teacher is Stand myself. Up. You see, unfortunately, I'm not equal to the test. I'm only a human being, and I'm very limited in knowledge of code. All right, let's go now to the on page 16. Go down, go down, read. Imatsibo, you have it? In the, the, big, the big word. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. 
the day will come if we live and be well that you'll be able to find the taste fish just like you were able to find a possible hummus. Right now you can find a possible hummus. That's not really scholarly work. Well, let's hope. Nashley Marsh Yosef Imat Sibor. Yeah. You finish the parsha with the Sibor. Yeah. Near it appears to taste this, the Kola Shavua, that the whole week, Mekiva and the Maschilin, the gross Haparsha, since you began to read the parsha, the Hainu and Mincha Shabbos. That's right, yeah. From uh, the Mincha Shabbos until the Shabbos yeah. is coming. Right. Nikro Imat Sibor. That's calling the timing with the Sibor. Correct. That time. Oh. The Afagav, the Indian Hitten, although in relation to but, the but, Lo Nikra, Kami Shabbos, El Revivi. We don't say that you're really before the Shabbat until the fourth day of the week and further on. Mm -hmm. You find a born Sokhin. So therefore, there's, there's already, you have now two opinions. Opinion. One opinion says you can start on the first day of the week yeah. and do it all through. And the other opinion says you start from at least the fourth day of the week, Wednesday. I follow the second the Last till Tuesday and one thing that is today. Yeah. yeah, in the middle Mara of the morning. Shama and the time for finishing it was Shosh and Nifter. There were three things that Rabbeinu Adon Anasi, who was he? He was, he was the one that... Uh, <laughs> yeah. He got to, He was the chief rabbi mm -hmm. of Israel and, and, and he got together the scholars uh, of his generation and they set up the Mishnahis mm -hmm. in the order we have them today. The Mishnah is the same Mishnah. He set it up. Edited. He had edited it. Kavu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. At the time he's dying, he told one thing, one of three things told to his son. He said, you should try not to eat the Suda and Shabbos in the, uh, after davening until you finish the Seder. Is he saying that in the afternoon he means? Shabbos afternoon? Seder. Not the one at night. Of course. Okay. All right. But don't get excited. No. Okay. He says, just because he said it doesn't mean that you've got to stop law. me. you got to have to listen to Shabbos. And some people are so milk slippers, they'll let me finish it. Right? <laughs> no, you're not going to do it that way. No. Yeah, right. We should try to finish the Seder before you're laying. There are some sheep that said, Biddy Evan might <laughs> No, I'm trying to tell you, you get all shades of opinion, which is very fortunate. Yeah, because Because that's is. something to hang on to, yeah, you know. It is it's very fortunate that we have so many... Uh, shades of opinion, yeah. so that you don't have to. You know, first, Mr. Samuel, I got the Gemara. It says you do it. That's it. But the big valley there, nobody else is there. The Torah is such that honestly, everybody can live with it. See, from here we learn out the Konama Chilat Torah class Before you eat the Shabbos meal in the to uh, finish it, a meal in Hashlima, Acha But if you happen to finish it after you ate, Shabbos dumb it's also good. Only Koba Koba regardless of that. Of course, it is considered more Koba Mate before you eat, if you can finish it before that. The Alabama Tatum says this. Now, the Rubin Osher goes on and goes on to it, and then the regular Shukunar goes on to it, and now I'm coming to the Mishnah Burrow. And I'm going to read the Mishnah Burrow now. Where do I find it in the Mishnah Burrow? Right, the race is on. What are we winning? The candy bar. It might be on page 50. I'll beat you. Wait a minute. You got advantage over when you went to Shiva several years. Is that what you got, Shukran Akhaim? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reish Pei. Eighteen. Oh yeah, sure. At the front of, at the beginning of uh, Reish. Pei. I don't know what Pei is. Eighty. Oh. This edition is they different than I had. Two eighty-five. Um, Two eighty-five. Mike. Okay. Two eighty-five. Right. Um, you bring me. Uh, uh, I never asked the question that we got. Oh, right. I know. I know. Oh. But I want you to feel the ability to do these. Things. Nobody need be a cripple all their life. You get to the point where you can look it up yourself and understand what you're looking up and make intelligence from it, you're on a gun. You're not depending any longer on, on somebody here. You can open a safer, you've got tremendous scholars that are prepared to help you, Rashi and the Rambam and uh, tremendous scholars. And we don't need to they'll, they'll carry you in their arms and they'll, and they'll baby you and they'll say, look at that, and this is the way to learn this shot, and this is the way to learn this shot, and that's the side. All right, now, and this one happens to be in Gimel, okay. I'll read you now. We have a say in Reish Pehe, in chapter 285, in what section of the Shulchan Aruch? In the last one, or what? what I, just, I mentioned it that that's Oh, but I, mean, I mentioned there are four sections. It four sections. That's the last one. Right. Right. Well, if you look at this side, it's the first one. That side, 
or maybe in the middle. It doesn't make any difference. It's one section of the fourth section. The, uh, the, uh, the top section says, Bro, a parsha, shnai, mikro, echotago. The mitzvah to read the parsha two times, mikro, two times with the chumash, and what the targum, both zayn's eating. And here you'll find seven paragraphs. First, First paragraph. One. First, I'm going to read the machab. That is the shukor that's written by Rabbi Yosef Kero. Afafi, even though, the other... Even though a person goes to Shabbos every Shabbos, yeah. and here's the entire Torah throughout the year. He goes 52 weeks in the year, and here's the entire Torah, and of course he goes to Simcha's Torah too, and finish it up. The Tzibor, when, he, when they're reading the Torah, the sacred Torah, as they read every Shabbos morning. Chayim, he's obligated, the cross la'atzmo, to read to himself every week, Parshas Osa Shavua, the parsha of that particular week, twice with the Hebrew and once Filo Ater Divo. Even if it just says it repeats names like Ater Divo, Divo, you read the whole thing. That's Aleph. First Aleph, first, in, Aleph in in the uh, of the seven paragraphs. There. Now I'll read. I'll read the Berhe. The Berhe Tev is um, a commentary on the Ber. Hate to explaining it beautifully. And the very active usually quotes other commentaries. It's like if you recall a synopsis, a summary of the various places, of various things. Also, Shin Lamed Hay is one of the commentaries. It's written in one of the commentaries. First, you should read all the Kaparshas twice, like I'm accustomed to. Read all, the whole Parsha from beginning to end. One, and then read it repeat it again. Yeah. Straight through. Yeah. But after and afterwards, a tiger, a tiger model, then all the tiger model. Right? Straight through. Then what? A kakosa rasha. And the rasha, Greek authority, Allah, uh, another posik, posa, you should read each posik twice, like I was showing yes, you how you should do it, because of you. A tiger model, and the tiger, yud, yud, nun, bishin, ari. Another one says that's the way you should do it. Doi, or another authority. Kakosov, that's in the name of the Ari. Kakos of a safer Nogi, the safer Mishis of the safer Mishis Hasidim, and the safer Mishis Hasidim. Hasidim? Yeah, Mishis Hasidim. I never heard of that. Well, that's a Akhara Targum, Kedeli Sayyam Torah. And you read a Posik in Hebrew after the Targum in order to finish the Torah. What do I do with this? I read the entire set, yeah. And then I read one posik at least in the next set. After first I read nine mikro, echot targum, and then one posik. And the next set we become I That's your own. I did. But but look at how beautiful the Ari is. He says you start with Hebrew, <laughs> and you put the targum in the middle, and you finish with Hebrew. So I've never found that they didn't do anything right. Just one more posik. Deliberate. <laughs> now <laughs> That's what I would say. If they're learning from a Sefer Torah once, and you want to make that part of it, then you really should learn the whole Sedra from the Sefer Torah once on your own. That's yeah. when you Are get you to that high to level. What so I would say, Iker Mitzvah, I skip a little bit. Iker Mitzvah, Achor Chatzos, after, after, yeah, the second. Achor, Chila, Mishnah Burra now. Men. I'm going to Mishnah Burra. Mishnah Burra, besides, um, besides uh, listening hey. to the Torah all, all through the year, uh, and going to, he said, it's not proper to prepare ahead of that week. In other words, you're going to go. Uh, the Gemara talks about one person who to do it all in one week. The one is saying, yeah. yeah. Doing it, you should do it in that week. Yeah. The Torah, the Torah, you have to finish it at the same time that they finish. Yeah. Tzibor, if you manage to keep the same pace, then you have this blessing of a length of years. Now, what, what is nine? So fast, you really can't oh, no, I'm exactly. talking about in the same week. Okay, oh, in the same week. You utilize the whole week to finish the yeah. set. No. I explained to you this. But you shouldn't read just one micro and one target. All right, go on. <laughs> Besides what you're here for the click keyboard. What if you pronounce it with God came to be. Uh, if you don't also read it then with your mouth. Actually, yes. if you didn't read it with your mouth at that time, at the select keyboard, you'll get the credit for reading it one time. Moving the lips with every word. Pronouncing each word. Yeah. That's why you have noticed from time to time I've taken offense 
at the uh, Shaliyah Tibur, uh, where we davened together on Shabbos, remember? I don't know if you've noticed this. I'm just calling to your attention. The next time I, 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 I rise and protect, yeah, yeah. you'll know why I'm doing it. In addition to everything else, sometimes about, about read too fast. That's right. Often. Or you read too softly. Too softly, you can't hear the curses. I read too fast and too softly. Yes, no, secret. there's no secret about you it. You cannot hear it. Yeah, I'll back you up. But you got to say it's with you. you got to follow every word. With this way, you're getting an extra credit. I try to push it. Actually, for, uh, forgive me, I think I remember learning that there was a time oh, yeah. when a person got an aliyah that they themselves started to read right out of the Sefer Torah and they pronounce it for themselves. Uh, let me a time when a lot of people right. forgot to do it. Yeah, they, no, no. So the obligation is upon the, the person themselves to actually say their own aliyah. <laughs> and therefore you should at least follow each word that the Balkhari is saying. My life. Abraham, he says, look in the moment, Abraham, another uh, posting. Yes. Steve Cotton has Kamudos, he writes the name of another what person. What you do in lieu of that? In the latter what instance, you, the you know, a person, if God forbid, it never made it said, they, and they just heard it one time, yeah. the mouth, yeah. therefore it's very important that you do repeat it after them. Uh -huh. So in case for some reason you didn't uh, mash limit, at least you've got this one hector from one authority that you still... That's two? That was you no. just hear it once and you follow every word and say it with him? Yes. That's saying it twice? I don't That's think so. not saying it twice, no. It's only once. But at any rate, the hector, you got something to hang on to. Oh, yeah. Okay. What's the hector again? There's one, one authority that, uh, more close, that says, in the latter instance, if you didn't do any of these things, and you heard it just one time, it's like Seymour, uh, presumably that's something like keeping up with the Seymour. All of you figured that out, I don't know. But because you really haven't done it uh, twice, because maybe his reading it and your reading it calls for two, perhaps. I don't know, but how do you get the target in there? That's another problem. There are other, other uh, authorities fearing. They say, no, that's, you can't possibly fulfill it that way. They disagree with it. Okay. And in relation to reading it, there are many different opinions of this kind of thing. Bain Akronim, among the, all these sages, all the posting of the latter of, of generation. He showed him, some say, she grew a based on it. Some say you read the whole thing twice, like my Rashal, the way I, I the Targum, all of it, then Targum. He showed me another say, based on me, Bacha Kaltargum. What does that mean? The two times of based on me, you read uh, sentence by sentence there, Bacha Kaltargum. So you got two ways of doing it. Either you read sentence by sentence with the Targum, or the whole thing and thing. I suggest you do it the second way, because when you're at your stage of knowledge, you're supposed to do it that way. I do it the, the first way. knows what he said. That's the idea of the RE. Yeah. Sentence by <laughs> sentence with the no, target. No, no, no. Oh. says it would be a better. I know. The safer miser, Sukho Ostumo, he said the uh, grow up would uh, do it after each posse or the other tomorrow. The mission of comes out, you can do it either way. Of course. Just to do it. <laughs> so that means that you fulfill the mitzvah either way. There's no question about it because there are enough great authorities on either side. You need not have any apprehension. And you're reading, the Balkhari is reading, but you already got your eyes focused on the portion, and your Nalia, and you're following with your eyes. If there's really no translation, you still read it. You read the words as it's written. All right. Now that's only the first of seven uh, paragraphs. Believe that or uh, Sunday we will try to go and continue with this uh, thing. Thursday we will do the set. I don't want to fall okay. behind. Yeah. Ah. With the Rashi, like I promised. Okay. Why is this kosher? What? Oh. As it says, yeah. you, all right, in Hebrew. Yeah. With the tape recorder going, yeah. you'll hear it over a second time. We've had the wonderful experience of last Thursday of beginning. Uh, are we ready? Yeah. We had the wonderful experience of last Thursday beginning to make the sedra. Now the Bible should continue yeah. to do. And Billy Nether, every Thursday we will go and work the sedra in Shear in the class. And as Hashem, after I finish uh, then we'll learn as much of the Rashi as we have time during that shear. And of course, hopefully, you will finish the thing the, the, by Ola Sashakar Wednesday morning. You got all the way up to that time to oh, do it. Oh, you're going to let me stay up to Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you all the way, uh, leeway whatsoever. It's okay. I want you to understand that the, the side effects of doing the sedra,
especially when you have other people doing it as well. Yeah. First of all, you get more a uh, cabruso, you oh, feel yeah. more, you're not alone, you're not isolated. Besides that, it teaches you how to have developed zitz place. In order to learn, you have to be able to sit and learn. A lot of people get so nervous, they can't sit one minute. And that's not very conducive to learning Torah. You have to be able to uh, sit. The Rebbeinu Shem uh, bench me, although I, I can't say about the cup, but at least Baruch Hashem, I had zitz, this place. I could sit and learn for hours. And that's a bracha. Because if you keep on learning, eventually you'll know how to learn. At first, we're starting with Chumash. But Bez Hashem, if you continue this on a regular basis, before you know it, you will know the words, the parishas, not only of the Chumash, but this will carry over to anything else we learn. And if you do it with Targum Unculus, you'll learn Aramaic. And then it'll carry over into Gomorrah. And before it, you'll be able to learn Gomorrah the way you should be able to learn it. And if Bez Hashem we continue, You'll be, on, you'll be able to make Bez Hashem go into a strange Gomorrah and be able to go and understand when it's there. And hopefully it comes to a point where you can come to the point where you can open any safer and you can understand it and learn from it. Once you get to that degree of competence, the degree of how much Torah you will know will depend only on your own efforts. You won't have to depend upon a Rebbe, you'll have great Rabboni. Rashi, the Rambam, all the great Rabbonim that found in Chazal, they will all teach you, and they're there to teach you, and they, they lay it out cold. If it is sometimes at first difficult, it's because you don't understand their derochim, their ways. But once you get the ways, you will understand, and the Rabbeinu Shem's Torah is such, that once you get that point where you can learn for yourself, you will become such a happy person. You will have no understanding of understanding of how much how much happiness you can get and this is already only in, in Olam Hazeh. How much more. will it be in Olam Haba? <laughs> and of course a lot of people talk about learning but they never really get down to learning. You go to shuls and there are a lot of people that of course the finest Jews I know go to shuls. They're show yidin and Ruch Hashem, I believe I should say anything derogatory in relation to them. But unfortunately, there are many men that sit at a shear for 20, 30 years and they still can't make a link. That should never be. It should be that after you learn for a certain period of time, that you can do it on yourself. You do it by yourself. And this is one of our goals, and hopefully, that everyone here should be able to learn. And if you persist, Bezat Hashem, you will be able to learn. It is, of course, a tremendous miracle, but Baruch Hashem, God is equal to the challenge. <coughs> All he requires is that we do our little bit. And little I know it sounds, it sounds impossible to believe, but it is possible if you have enough desire and, and you stick to it, you will overnight like, you will begin to begin to have knowledges that you never thought was possible. You would never believe it. If somebody would tell you that this could be in relation to yourself, you would say, oh, this possibly could not possibly be. You think, well, there's other people that are with uh, scholars, they, they can learn, oh yes, but me? No. If God will make a miracle happen, it will be you. And it, it's all in your hands. All you have to do is keep on trying. If you keep on trying, it will happen. This is the bracha that God gives. Every person that approaches the Rabbinian story with the proper attitude, with the proper Yerushalayim, the proper anivas, proper humbleness, and with the proper respect, such people are blessed by God, the knowledge of God's Torah. And if you persist, you will learn secrets in the Torah that other people may never know. This, this is promised us, Mecca. And if you will learn Torah and all of Hazel, Chazal promises you will learn Torah and all of Hazel. have a whole eternity. All right. Now, when we started, this is Reish Pei Hei in, um, in Hilka Shabbos, and it's talking about what? It wasn't recording much. Sometimes it stops. All right, fine. Yeah. Then, God forbid, you have a problem. A person has a problem. That this sin does not just go away. It is a blot on the record, and it will be, the day of reckoning will come on it, unless you do tshuva. Tshuva can sometimes eradicate the punishment, eliminate the punishment. And if after you've done tshuva, you are again in a, a position where you are considered righteous. 
And that, you would think, God forbid, once you've made a mistake, that no longer are you, can you be considered righteous. If you keep on doing good things, it's good. If, God forbid, you make mistakes, if you do tshuva, again, it is good. In other words, you have this thing. Now, again, I'm coming wrong. No, that's not uh, because sometimes uh, you don't have the opportunity to do tshuva. They've been taking from there. Back in the well, then that, that means you knew it was wrong in the first place. If you do tshuva, what? If you do tshuva? No, no, if you do it with the intent to do tshuva. It depends no. what kind of tshuva you oh, do. We can go back to help us tshuva, and perhaps we can discuss that at this point. By the way, you know what the uh, yeah. race came I remember we had a, a porn play where a customer on the, on a custom to make a little uh, play a and, they, and make a little spiel. A little and they, so there was one boy who was um, from a Hasidic family, a Hasidic rabbi. So he comes there and he dresses up like a, a, a real Hasid with a Gatsa uniform and everything. And so he says, I remember one phrase he said, but hold out Kush. It says that Kush, get, and, uh, Kush is a place. The, uh, and, so Kush also means to kiss. <laughs> so he made a, a parody of the whole thing. But at any rate, we, uh, seriously, uh, let's go now to Hilchus Chuba. If I recall, the last time we left it, it was before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It didn't mean to imply that now that Yom Kippur is past. We but don't start at the beginning because we <laughs> no. did that three times. We did it. Huh? And we, we got about halfway on to page 107. Somewhere's around halfway. I think, I think by we Dalit, we had finished Gimel, let's look at Dalit, it's wait, my wait. recollection. No, I think we're in Peri Peri to be. Okay, to yes. Be. yes. Yes, we are. Right. We are in Peri Peri to be, and um, what page? What page, page 111. Oh, 9, 111, yes. That's I recall right. that, we're in Peri to be. Uh, the Rambam says in the Perikubi, in the fourth chapter of Perikubi, I'll, I'll just, but we started some of it already. We uh, got back down to base or Gimel. We got, got down to about Gimel uh, and Perikubi. And first, just a slight uh, thing, uh, with your indulgence, I'll just, I'll just repeat something that the Rambam says. It's written, of course, you, you see it in Hebrew and Aramaic, and I'll just read it as though it's written in English. 24 different things that pull the person back from doing repentance in the eyes of God for them of such a tremendous sin. And anyone that does any one of these four, God won't even give that person an opportunity to tshuva because of the tremendous sinning that this involves. And these four are what? Number one, a person that causes the Jewish community as a whole to sin. And in this uh, classification of a sin is if a person holds back the Jewish community from doing a mitzvah. Not only is a person, God forbid, uh, weak, and succumbs to temptation and cannot himself 